the way that uh, workers in, in the firms in London are treated okay? I know some people who are there, and it seems like they're quite often treated like slaves. They, uh, they had to give up their lives for the good of the company. Or what about uh, uh, teachers over the last year and what's been expected of them? Or, or, or nurses in the NHS or all over the place? Is the way that uh, these sort of workers are treated in our culture okay? Probably we'd want to say, no, it's not okay. But here's the thing, even if we're sure that it's not okay, we'd still want the Bible to teach people, Christian people who are working in those places, how to, to behave and how to live, wouldn't we? We'd want them to know how the gospel should transform their lives, even if we don't think the way they're being treated is, is fine. And that's what's going on in this next bit of Titus we're looking at. It's quite often a bit that challenges uh, people's view of the, the Bible uh, and, and other places like it. Because I've heard people say uh, that the fact that the Bible talks about slavery means that it's condoning it and therefore the Bible isn't good and true. But that, that's not what actually happens. The Bible never condones slavery. In places like uh, Philemon, a little book in the New Testament, uh, a letter Paul writes, uh, uh, suggests that uh, a slave master should let his slave free. Um, but the, the Bible is, is talking in a world where slavery was normal and it teaches uh, Christians how to live in that situation. It, does, it does, often doesn't comment whether it thinks slavery is okay or not. It's just uh, uh, based on wanting the people, the Christians there, to know how they should behave because of the gospel truth. So that's what's going on uh, as we head into chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Saviour attractive. So we can see uh, that once again, uh, Titus is to, to show that the, the truth about Jesus, that uh, he's God, the only saviour, who died to make us clean and God's children, is supposed to shape the lives of those who, who trust in him. And that's even true to those who, who, who are slaves in, in this culture. Once again, it, the teaching that Titus is to give these slaves, it it's contextual, it matches the culture. In a place where, where people are known to be lazy and liars, the slaves are told that they're to, to try and please their masters by working hard. Uh, and they're not to lie, they're, they're not to be deceitful and steal from them. They're to be fully trustworthy. So Titus is to pinpoint how, how the, the culture around them is, is not suitable for slaves who, who follow Jesus. And so these slaves are supposed to, to try and change their lives to match the truth of the gospel. And once again, the reason why they need to do it is the same as it was last time when we saw how the gospel is to, to transform lives in Christian households. It's so that the teaching about God our Saviour will be made attractive. And perhaps some of these slaves have got non-Christian masters. Well, if they, if they live in line with the, the gospel, uh, then the masters will, will see that, uh, that the good news about Jesus is able to, to, to transform their, their slaves, that they live well, that they're the best slaves everybody, anyone's got, because uh, the, the God's word is powerful. And so the masters will want to find out about it and, and will also uh, come to follow Jesus. As we've seen, it's only the gospel that leads to godliness in individuals, and therefore it's only the gospel that has the power to transform societies and to transform the world. So what about in our context then? We don't have slavery, we don't have uh, masters having people as property in England at the moment, which is, is great news and wonderful. But we can see from this that, that every area of life is to be transformed by the truth. Knowing the truth leads to godliness everywhere. Uh, and I suppose the closest parallel here is, is the world of employment. If, if we're those who, who, who are working under people, who, who, who are able to direct our, our work, uh, then the way that we act as, as we carry out their wishes uh, has an impact on, on people's view of the truth. How amazing it will be if, if Christian employees are different to all the other employees in the way that they, they work hard and, and they, they 
cheerfully carry out uh, their tasks and, and they're, they're honest in business dealings. If people come to know that uh, Christians are, are like that, then it will make the truth about Jesus attractive in their eyes. And so we continue to see that the knowledge of the truth about Jesus transforms our lives. It, it, it teaches us to, to live godly lives. And that's true in, in, in our homes. It's true in our workplaces. And we're going to see that it's true in all of life. Uh, but tomorrow, Paul gets to the heart of the gospel and he shows how it is the power to transform. Let me pray. Father, we ask that uh, you would make us people who uh, love the news about the Lord Jesus, uh, that uh, uh, gaining knowledge of him and what he's done for us is our greatest desire, and that uh, as we do that, it, it would teach us to live well, that we would live like your children in every area. Father, for those of us who work for others, Please would you help us to adorn the good news of the gospel by the way that we live in those situations at work. Father, we ask that as people look on, they would know that the reason we live that way is because of your truth, the good news of the gospel about Jesus Christ, and that they would want to hear about it too. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Thanks for listening. Good to see you. See you again tomorrow.